Hey guys, AK James 762. <clears throat> this video is going to be about the uh, Soviet Union battle rifles of the past fuck, 100 years. Now, um, I'm just going to go over their main uh, issued infantry weapons of the frontline soldiers. Now, they've only had three. Well, now four. But I'm only going to go over three. The first one, as you can see in front of me, let me go ahead and show the entire entire rifle. Many of you are familiar with this rifle. This is the Mosin Nagant. This is the M9130 model. Now, uh, the, the Mosin Nagant rifle was developed by Sergei Mosin and Leon Nagant in 1891. And they started producing them in 1891. They were developed, produced, and issued all in 1891, all in the same year. Now, with all of the different variants out there, because there are many, many different variants. I, I, I'm not going to go over all of them. There, there are about 37 million mosin Nagant rifles that have been produced that are in circulation today. They were... Like I said, they were developed, produced, and issued in 1891, and the design was revised, majorly revised, in 1930, which is why it's called the 9130. And all throughout the, the 30s, they were making small modifications to the different variant models. It's a bolt-action rifle. It's chambered in 762 by 54 r which is a very large cartridge, similar to a 308. Um, this served... In the this served as the main Russian battle rifle in the uh, or excuse me the main Soviet battle rifle in the Soviet Union military from 1891 up until about 1948 1949 it served a long time <clears throat> and uh, in the Soviet Union the rifle they called it the Mosin not the Mosin Nagant the revolver was called the Nagant just you know shortened the name. Um, why this firearm was replaced? Well, as you can see, I had to pan the camera to show the entire rifle. It's a, it's a long rifle, and this isn't even the longest version. There's a variant that's even longer than this one. It's a bolt action, and it only held five rounds. The next rifle replaced it because it was semi-automatic. It's shorter, holds twice as much ammo. It's a smaller caliber, so the recoil is more manageable, and you can carry more ammo. Now, of course, if you guys know a little bit of history, you know that the rifle that replaced this is the SKS. And I'll go over that rifle next. Okay, here's the SKS rifle. Now, this obviously isn't the Russian variant. This is the Yugoslavian variant. But it is a Russian design. I'm going to go over that a little bit. Now, the SKS is often called, the Russian one is called the SKS-45. Um, now, SKS is, uh, it's, it's an acronym, obviously. It's, now, if any uh, Russian people, people of Russian descent or something, if you speak Russian, you're probably going to kick my ass for chopping this up, but I'm going to try as best I can. It is Samozeriadny Karabin Sistemi Simonova, which means the self-loading car carbine of Simonov system. Simonov, Simonov, however you pronounce his name. It was uh, developed by Sergei Simonov, Simonov, whatever, in 1944. There were about 15 million of them manufactured. Uh, all, all the variants all together. It is a semi-automatic, gas-operated rifle. It's chambered in 762 by 39 And by the time it was issued in 1949, it was already an obsolete design. Because the AK-47 had already been... Uh, you know, designed and tested and everything. Over the years following 1949, the Soviet Union gradually uh, decreased the production of the SKS and increased production of AK-47s and demoted the SKS mainly to second-line infantry. It was never intended to be a, quote, assault rifle because it was never made select-fire capable. It was always a semi-automatic. It has a... Uh, a fixed 10 round magazine similar to the the Mosin but it's a 10 round capacity instead of 5 it has a slightly longer barrel 
you know some variants of the SKS have slightly longer barrels than some AK variants which gives it a, a little bit more muzzle velocity and it's often said that that translates to the SKS being a little bit more accurate than the AK. Many variants of the SKS exist today because during the Cold War the Soviet Union shared the SKS designs with many of its allies including uh, China and Yugoslavia. <clears throat> Um, countries who produce their own AK variant or SKS variants, excuse me, are the Soviet Union, China, Yugoslavia, Albania, North Korea, Vietnam, and East Germany. Why it was replaced? Well, it was replaced because the rifle that replaced it was cheaper and quicker to manufacture. It held three times more ammunition in detachable box magazines. It was select fire, shorter and easier to maneuver. Obviously, the rifle that replaced the SKS in the, uh, the Soviet Union's military was obviously the AK-47. So I'll bring that out next. Okay, here we have the AK. This is not an original Soviet or Russian AK, obviously. It's got some modifications to it. <coughs> but the SK, or, excuse me, the AK originally was developed by uh, Mikhail Kalashnikov in 1946 came out with a prototype in 46 uh, started production on the AK-47 in 1947 which is where it gets its name from and AK is Avtomat Kalashnikova which means automatic Kalashnikov rifle which means that it's a rifle designed by Kalashnikov and it's automatic what do you know? Um, the AK-47 was originally built a select fire rifle, which means you could select between semi-automatic or fully automatic. That is the definition of an assault rifle. It's semi-automatic, gas-operated, or like I said, it could be uh, full auto. There are about 75 million AK-47s produced, and 100 million or so if you count all of the Kalashnikov family rifles, like the Segas and shit like that. Caliber is 7.62 by 39, just like the SKS. Only, like I said, the AK uses the 30 round detachable box magazines. These are the standard, but you can also get, you know, larger or smaller depending on what you like nowadays. It was, uh, in 1948, it was introduced to active service, and in 1949, it was officially adopted as the Soviet Union's um, first line. Uh, rifle. It's the most popular assault rifle on the planet, and yes, I said assault rifle, because the AK-47, like I said, is select fire, which makes the original AK-47 an assault rifle. There are roughly a hundred different countries that use AK variant rifles for their military and law enforcement. Now, I don't have one, but this rifle was also replaced by another rifle. It's also an AK. It is the AK-74 which is chambered in uh, 545. It's, uh, it, it's a smaller round. They, you know, I don't really know too much about the AK-74. I just know it's a smaller round. They're made basically the same way, but some of the magazines can hold more ammunition, like those uh, Bakelite magazines. I think they hold, what, like 45 rounds or something? And the AK-74, those are the standard issue uh, Russian rifles now. Well... I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I, I own those three rifles because of that. When I got the AK, I got the I got my AK because I think AKs are badass and they're my favorite guns ever fucking made. And after that, I got the Mose and the Gaunt. And I mean, because it was affordable and they're awesome, they're damn accurate. And then when I got those two, I'm like, well, damn, I need an SKS now. You know, they have the three. Russian battle rifles of the past hundred years. So, got the SKS on a steal of a deal, and here I am now making video. <laughs> anyway, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe for me.